gods fall, and the nine realms are consumed by frost and fire. But these tales are false. The gods did not perish. Now they say that mankind must rise and end Ragnarok. You may have survived vast and dangerous lands. Crafted the most powerful weapons the realms have ever seen. Conquered all manner of ferocious beasts. And proven yourself against the bravest of warriors. But do you think you're ready to take down a god? I used to dream that when my god came back, he would forgive us. Last the trouble with dreams. Sooner or later, we all have to wake up. Par, euh, par les gangs. Le quartier de l'hôpital, ça c'était intéressant pour nous parce que ça permettait de replacer le héros dans un rapport à la maladie. Et dans cette zone-là, il va être perçu comme un médecin. Euh, il va être confronté à des infirmières, à des chefs de service, à d'autres, euh, à des collègues et évidemment à des patients. Et encore une fois, le joueur a la possibilité de tuer tout le monde dans l'hôpital. Et le dernier quartier, c'est le quartier de, de West End, donc les quartiers un peu plus riches. Permettre aux joueurs de voir une espèce de galerie de personnages comme ça, de différentes couches sociales. Pour que ce soit euh, pesant, que tu sois toujours dans le questionnement, que tu sois comme euh, le docteur Reed et que tu te demandes mais qu'est-ce qu que c'est en face de moi euh, au bout de, de cette ruelle euh, On essaie de faire de la rétention d'informations, mais euh, jouer avec ça pour euh, rester dans cette frontière entre c'est lisible, mais on va essayer de jouer avec les faux semblants, en fait. C'est travailler avec des silhouettes dont la découpe va te permettre de te faire une idée si c'est un ami, un ennemi, mais ne va pas te donner tous ses secrets tout de suite. Le jeu, donc, on le vit au milieu d'un Londres qui est donc de nuit. Et euh, par contre, ce que vous avez, c'est vraiment euh, ces, ces couloirs de, de, de bâtisses, d'immeubles, enfin voilà quoi, pour ce qui est de Londres, et qui en fait ben, réfléchissent les sons. Ta, 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 ta. Et en fait, le départ de la réflexion par rapport à la musique industrielle, c'était de rendre la ville un peu vivante. Jonathan Reed, il est seul à marcher, et donc moi je m'imaginais dans, dans cet univers une entité donc musicale qui était seule et qui représentait en fait sa solitude et sa lutte surtout intestine.
humanity at the end of the game increases. So for example, if you only have a 10% chance of saving humanity because you've only cured a tiny part of the roots, at the end of the game, it'll, the game will literally RNG on whether or not you've saved humanity. Oh, so you the can more, still do it? You can still do it. Right. The more the, the tree of life that you cure, the better the, the percentage that you'll actually save humanity. But you can still lose. But you can still lose. Oh, man. And the story's also open. So for example, if you've played it and you've been a complete ass the whole time, and you have low karma, you'll get you know, a different ending than if you played it and had good karma. That's quite, that's pretty interesting. That's a really interesting idea, actually, because you, yep. you're used to making all the right decisions and getting the good ending. Yep. The idea that you can, you know, you can do your best to, to heal the tree of life and still lose is kind of interesting. Or do your work, you know, not really care about it, but still, it's, actually, it comes it's, good. It's kind of an it. interesting idea that I'm, I'm really interested in. Uh, so, yeah, we're seeing some more combat, and I think we might have seen the first uh, of a couple of powers. So, your character has several powers um, which you can use. I think we've seen the first one, which is kind of like a, it's that one there, which is like a confusion power, uh, which can turn enemies against each other. They turn them to your side. I don't know that they're necessarily on your side, actually, but they definitely turn against their yes. friends. Um, and which is really good for just dis disrupting, you know, because they do get quite t together. There's quite large numbers of them, so you can turn those against them. That's the first power that we've learned. Um, you can see I've got a dodge now, which I'm using incredibly badly. This guy in the middle, he's not actually too difficult to kill, but I decided to go for the ads first, which was maybe a mistake. I always go for the ads first. I, I just want well, to be able to concentrate to on the sense. boss. I, yeah, thought no, I, I, could easily, I thought I could easily you know, outmaneuver his, uh, his barrel throws, but actually he was surprisingly accurate with them. Or I was surprisingly bad. I, I'm not sure. You're he not staggered bad. here. Yeah, I know. I'll let, I'll let you decide for yourself. Uh, he's dead here, so that, that's good. And I like this nice... You get this nice the slow slow-mo down. finisher, which is pretty cool. So there are actually there's two types of powers. There's bio and there's psi. I didn't know that. So bio is physical and psi is a bit like X-Men powers. We're going to see another one of them here. So I'm going to, again, another one, uh, which is an electric shock. Yes. Uh, so you get a little... Actually, no, I'm not. This is, this is, the, this is one of the psi powers, I guess. This yeah. is telekinesis. So you can pick things up uh, and, you know throw it into other stuff, just do yeah. damage to it, uh, which is useful. It's not just enemies, you can also use it on, you know, like barrels, inanimate objects like and things like that. Like, guys are like ragdolling in the air, like, I know. You? He didn't have a chance, did he? Nope. He was not expecting this, that slow-mo again, which is super cool. Again, for anyone who's tuning in, uh, this is us, we played this, literally we made this video yesterday. Uh, um, it is Dave playing, which is why we're not playing it live. The game is very early in development. It's great that we got code, but we, because of that, we can't play it live. It is pre-alpha. This is a special build made for showing like at events. So you can tell it's me playing because I'm not that good. <laughs> you know, I will say the guy who did demo it from the studio when I saw it at Gamescom did do really well. He did better. Well, the guy, the developer did better, Holly. That's what you tell. That's what you're telling me. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, that's fair enough. Um, so different kinds of enemies here, like a, another big guy, but he had a shield. You have to break the shield before you can do any damage. I don't think, I don't think he can succumb to any of your power. The quests. In addition to the main story-driven line, which plays out against a background of actual historical events, the game also offers dozens of side quests and activities. Finally, we'll show you part of one of the main quests. But first, we have to move to Sasau. For that, you can use fast travel. That is, if you've already been there before. Fast travel isn't teleportation. Time flows, your character gets hungry and tired while physically moving through the game world, and can encounter both pleasant and unpleasant surprises along the way, like ambushes, just as when you're traveling normally. Although the monastery is the dominant feature in Sasau, we're going to another sanctuary this time, the Ale House. We're trying to track down a mysterious German knight who's somehow involved in an affair with counterfeit royal currency. I'm trying to find out about that German knight. Of course, ask away. And do you know where he went? Oh, well, he asked me about crossroads in the woods north of Rovna. I got the impression he was looking for someone. Let's move forward to the junction the innkeeper talked about. We can see from a distance that something isn't right here, so it might not be a bad idea to save the game. 
The game saves automatically at important moments, but there are also two ways to save it manually. The first is to sleep in your own bed, and the second, to drink Savior Schnapps. Savior Schnapps not only saves the game, it's also an alcoholic drink that bolsters Henry's courage for what's yet to come. Like in real life, drunkenness creeps up on you slowly. Good God, what a bloody mess. Now you have another chance to test your lock-picking skill, this time with no witnesses. Success and valuable loot. This is valuable. You must have been in a hurry or they'd never have left it behind. Under the influence of alcohol, you have a number of advantages. Greater strength and endurance, and if you don't overdo it, you can even make a better impression on people. That is, until the hangover kicks in. Just like in real life. Mm. Charcoal burners. Someone must have seen or heard something. First impressions make a difference. If you turn up in fine, shining armor, folk will take you for a night. I am at your service tonight. If, on the contrary, your armor is dirty or bloody, you won't get such a warm welcome. Persuasion can be skipped if you base your claims on known facts. So we took the sacks. Just the sacks? What about the trail of bloodstains leading to the camp? I was just getting to that. We also found one wounded man. Where's the coin? What? What coin? I will not repeat the question. I, I don't know about any coin. I swear. Gah! Where are oh. those sacks you took from the wagon? Fuck! Stop! Stop right there! Now you'll have to chase down the German knight and confront him. A duel with an opponent in plate armor requires different tactics than hacking at a lightly armored bandit. An opponent in plate armor has to be worn down or outwitted. As you can see, wearing a helmet with a visor limits your vision, but provides protection of the whole face. This is a substantial advantage that your adversary doesn't have. Not all duels have to end in bloodshed. You can take mercy on a defeated opponent, disarm. ...that they give to the localization is, is uh, it's very similar and has that element of, even though the spells are usually don't take the games that are, you know... I would say wittiness. Yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 something that's very unique to, uh, unique to the opponents. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes. And then we see Lofty at the bottom of the screen. He's uh, he's giving Evan advice, or uh, yeah, he is um, he is a part of the party. So he ends up acting a bit as a uh, you can almost think like a Jimmy Cricket. Like he's a bit of a uh, comic relief. He does a bit of story narration and uh, gives a bit of guidance to some of the elements that otherwise wouldn't really be described to you in the story. Mm. So uh, he plays that kind of character. It's almost like I think of him as, as a like a character in a play, that their purpose is to, to guide themes and um, also provide that, that fun and uh, comic relief. It, it seems to be a common theme within this game is for Evan to have guidance. I mean, you have Roland, Tani, they, they, they all provide a different type of guidance. It, it's really interesting to see that. And that, that's a that's an interesting accent Lofty has. Yeah, I want to say that it's a Welsh. Welsh, accent? yeah, yeah. Um, for those that played Nino Cooney one, there was Mr. Drippy also mm -hmm. had a Welsh accent. Is he related to Mr. Drippy at all? Uh, no relation. No relation. Yeah. Got it. Um, so one of the things that I mentioned before about the uh, Hazeldees is how, given different situations, they might provide different uh, opportunities to. To Evan. So in this case, there's uh, you're in a, a volcano. There's uh, 
a lot of different fire elements that you have to look out for, whether it's from Long Feng himself or if it's from the uh, from the volcano itself. So you are about to die. I think you need to I heal know, up. I need to find those, those <laughs> yeah. windows to help me out. Yeah, there you go. So uh, the fire Hercules know that if um, in this environment that you know it's uh, that their power element is actually something that could be really helpful to Evan. Mm -hmm. So they will give you opportunities to be able to erect barriers that. Um, give you complete nullification from uh, fire damage. Interesting. So I just saw a, a green like orb or shield form around you. What was that from? That was from the uh, from the uh, wind hickledies. So okay. they're able to give you a uh, a buff that's going to help with um, uh, shielding and defense. Got it. Uh, the other thing I noticed during this battle, it's very strategic. You can't just hack and slash Long Fang. He backs up, he mm -hmm. comes forward, casts different attacks. You have to really use all elements of gameplay here. You have to use the Higgledees, you have to use Evan. Yeah, the, the battles are, are pretty dynamic in that. Super um, dynamic. You know, there's a lot of different things that you need to keep your eye on, like in this case, like, you know, the fire higgledies are going to give me an opportunity to have a fire barrier, and I don't get any of that damage from breath of fire that he does, mm -hmm. um, and those, uh, those little fire rocks, they'll explode if you don't, um, if you don't do anything about them. So yeah, that's what I was actually going to ask you about, why are you destroying the fire rocks that come down? Is there a purpose for that? It will, um, there's the, oh, I meant to do an attack there. Um, there is the uh, the orbs to be able to do your special attack. Uh -huh. So not only is there a danger for having those fire uh, blocks there where they can explode and they can give you damage if like he breathes a uh, fireball at them, but it also helps you build up um, some of your uh, some of your orbs again. I see. This is a really tough battle. Um, I remember playing it at E3 and I thought I was just gonna breeze through. I was like, oh, they made this demo for E3 just so people could pass it. <laughs> I got smoked so many times, no pun intended. It, it, it was, like, it took a lot of strategy. I can't stress that enough. And with the real-time battle system also comes a lot of, like, more different moves. You're able to jump now during combat. You're able to roll. Once you take out those red rocks, it, uh, they, uh, is that what refills the blue spheres here? Uh, yeah, the, uh, if you see any time I destroy one of those rocks, there's uh, I think little, three little orbs will all pop out. Gotcha. So I'm guessing once you defeat Long Thing, and I don't know if he can really go into this, does he, you know, start helping you out? Is you know, is he vital to the story? You're just gonna have to get the game and find out. Yep, exactly. I figured that's the answer you'd give me. <laughs> Fair enough. There's obviously a reason for fighting him, so I'm, I'm sure we'll find out down the line. Um, can you talk about like the how many different Higgledies are we going to get? Are we going to see more than what we see here, or is that another question where it's that, find out down the line? It's like I, it's like I said. There's a lot of really cool uh, cool elements about the Higgledies yeah. that uh, we've yet to share. Excellent. Okay. But that's uh, that's one of the the great things about um, working in video games is that, you know, especially with something as wonderful as Nino Kuni, there is so much stuff in here that we just can't wait to yeah. uh, share with us. We've barely scratched the surface, exactly. definitely. Um, Long Fang's design, it's, is that like a, he, he looks like one of those Chinese oh, dragons, like, like, a, like, or a, like a dog, a lion? Yeah. Lion, I think it's a lion. It's kind of, kind of lion, kind of, kind of dog. Um, definitely a dragon. Mm -hmm. I can tell this is a uh, time-intensive battle. Yes.
One other thing I've noticed is each of the characters have different weapons. Um, I, I, I don't even know if I should ask this. Are you going to be able to equip different weapons on the characters? I'm, pro I'm pretty sure I answered my own question and we'll find out <laughs> later on. But I did notice that in the demo that they all have different weapons. No, and it's true that, you know, they have, um, they have different weapons. There's different, uh, you know, Roland has, uh, you know, he has a long sword. He also has a gun that he's able to use. Right, I did see that in the cutscene. That's what I was actually heading towards was mm -hmm. the fact that Roland, he uses a sword, but I've seen him in a cutscene with a gun, with a strap. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting, bringing a gun into this world. You know, it, it still blows me away the amount of detail level 5 is putting in the end. You see like the marks on, on uh, Long Fang's uh, scales there and his broken claws. Every player will own an array of exosuits we call javelins. These suits give players superhuman capabilities and are heavily customizable so they look and play how you want. Bam! Looking good. Nice, you've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. This is a vast open world you explore with your friends. Each Javelin exosuit has its own unique playstyle. The Ranger is balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right, let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from any direction. It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. We're getting some fire from up ahead. I'll go low. You flank. later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, he could use the XP. Hello, treasure. I think we got some action up ahead. Anyone? Anyone? We're under attack. Anyone in the area? We're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis' mission. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat. Oh, there are a lot of scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. Have time to use that mortar. 